everybody. Thank you, thank you so much for um, attending the event. Before I close off um, this Bangkok broadcast, I would like to thank every one of you for being part of this event and thank you all the speakers once again for um, your contribution. Before I end off this broadcast and um, talk about my um, um, my topic, I'd like to thank Theresa for um, coming out with this great Pi Ladies International um, Women's Day special idea and and also Lorena for inviting Pi Ladies uh, Bangkok to be part of this amazing event. Thank you, thank you. They are just amazing to work with. These ladies are like and it's done. <laughs> so I love working with them and um, and looking forward in future to work together more with them. You can actually stick on to the same um, URL for YouTube to continue watching the second broadcast from Hamburg, which will be led by Theresa, or um, continue and eventually continue to watch the third one um, hosted by Lorena. Okay, let me introduce myself a little bit as if you've not heard me enough. <laughs> uh, my name is Georgie and I am the co-organizer um, for Pi Ladies Bangkok together with Gata. I'm also the conference lead for PyCon Thailand and we are proud to be hosting PyCon APAC this year. We have an amazing team that's coming up um, working with working together. So if you actually are interested to join uh, PyCon APAC that is coming in um, November this year, do check out um, this website here and um, to get more information. Now uh, let's start with my talk. Okay, good to go. Okay, so uh, let me bring you to the scenario say for example when you walk in a market and you actually see a fruit vendor selling fruits of course and suddenly it drew your attention that uh, she's selling this mango that was humongous it was huge and you're like but what is that it's not the size that you know how the mango looks like so chances are you're going to pick it up take a look at it either buy it back and if it's too expensive you just um, pick up your phone take a picture take a selfie and post it on Instagram or if you actually see um, someone selling eggs that is this color and you go like oh what is that is that edible or sometimes when you come home with a, a box of strawberries and one of them actually look like this that looks a little bit like an elephant or a tree that has a trunk that looks like a face that's unique and different. All these are so Instagrammable and um, I have to admit that I myself do the same thing too. When I was in Japan, I saw um, this leak that has a leak of its own. It's different, it's so unique and I took a picture. So we are curious or we will be fearful when we see something that's different. I used to live in um, in a little village in France called chantonin view du It is in this region of La Sat. And this tiny little village has about 500 inhabitants. So, of course, me being the only Asian that is uh, in this um, village, I am the only person that is that looks different. So one day, a few kids actually knocked on my door, and um, I opened the door, and I look at them. They look at me, and they were just staring, and they say, "Oh, uh, they say you are Chinese," <laughs> and they ran away. I closed the door, I scratched my hair, and I said, "Geez, I feel like I'm." Just like this picture here, where I'm the only outstanding one color 
and everyone else is of a different color. But say for example, if I actually put one of the kids into a class full of Asian and they will look like this, the children around will be just as curious if they will be asking or wondering who this person is, why is this person different. There are many, many different types of apples. You have the golden apple, you have the green apples, the red apples. Different apples have different tastes. Different apples are just different. And you also have apples that has cross colors. What about apples that is out of shape, different? In the supermarket, usually, if, if, they actually, if they actually see apples like that, most likely they are not going to sell it or put it out in the public for, for sale and they'll throw it away or give it to their own staff. So does that make them not an apple? If that, does that make them um, inedible? No. The truth is that they're just still apples. So how do we actually switch when we see something different from fear into curiosity? If we actually look at the perspective like how the children came knocking on the door, they are just naturally inquisitive and curious about me because I'm different. They are not judgmental. They are just wondering why am I different. Of course, I'm not saying that um, we are going to go knocking around doors of your neighbors who look different and say, can you explain to me why you're different? But what I'm trying to say is that when we actually look at something that's different, we can actually accept the difference and look at it with the eyes of curiosity. Diversity is, I believe that is to be able to accept difference of every single minority and to be able to accept that difference and see it as who they are because we are all unique and amazing. The collective experience when we actually gather together actually provides a wider perspective of a problem or an environment. Humanity is about being appreciative with whatever we have around us. We like to classify things. We like to classify, sort things out in, in, in shapes. We like to sort things out in sizes. We like to classify animals with, into different sites like six legs, four legs, cold-blooded, warm-blooded, mammals, animals, insects. If you study biology, you will realize that not everything can be classified because nature does not allow us to be classified. We as human beings are part of the nature and we couldn't be classified specifically. So, like the nature, like the forest that you walk or the nature park, you can see that they all blend together and you say, wow, this park is amazing, this park is beautiful because it's a combination of small little plants, flowers, shrubs, trees, every single thing. And the nature embraces the difference. It is important for us as human beings to embrace the difference too. Learn the difference between different culture, different thoughts, different religion, different gender, different race. There is no single solution to a problem. Let's talk about coding. We are all conscious that there are more than one solution to a problem. So that doesn't mean that the fastest one could be the best or somewhat something that's coded in a, one language will be better than the other because both of them provides a solution. We just have to accept that everything is different and it could be feasible. And that is how nature is and that is how the earth is. Diversity is strength. Diversity provides a wider perspective and it encourages us to think differently and outside the box. So say for example, if um, we, we hire this, someone from um, with experience with a, a certificate, a, a computer science certificate, and we say, well, because he studied something related to computer science. But what about those 
who actually learn online themselves, who actually um, are interested through motivation and they actually pick that up themselves online, are they less capable than the other person? But they are just, they learn in different ways and they see things in a different perspective. And also some people who will think like, oh, if I hire um, someone who, who has experience working in a big company, since uh, we, are in a big, we are a big company, it will actually make things easier for us. They will know how things run. Have you actually seen that certain problems and certain solutions, if you hire someone who is actually a freelancer, who is faced with several mean competitors around, this person could actually know how to hustle the way through and succeed. So could they actually solve better than a person that works in a large, com uh, large company? When we actually accept diversity, meaning that you have to be flexible, you have to respect and also to provide a safe and learning environment for the person. I believe that providing a comfortable and safe environment is actually the key to make diversity happen. Just like Pi Ladies, if you have actually heard previous talks from um, Lorena that she interviewed Carol and, and Naomi, you can see that why did Pi Ladies grow and expand so well despite the number of um, people and number of um, chapters that are in this, this community. It is because Pilates allow everyone to grow. When you are in Pilates Slack channel, even if you are new and you want to ask a question about something that you are not sure about, there will always be someone helping. They will not be judgmental or they will not put an emoji of a laughing face telling you that it's hilarious or stupid, the question that you ask. When we have an environment that allows us to be who we are, we get better and we perform better. It's not only for the person, for the individual. We grow as a whole together as one. Python Software Foundation has its own um, group called the Diversity and Inclusion Working Group. And this is created by amazing Theresa. If you are interested to know more about diversity and inclusion work group, you can um, check it out. Thank you so much for joining us. And I hope that wherever you are, you will be like this bowl of apples. You are mixed and you're comfortable to be who you are. And no matter if you taste sour, you taste sweet, you are tiny, you are big, they are all together as one. I am proud of who I am and you should be proud of who you are. Thank you. Good night. And um, do stay tuned for Ham Hamburg's broadcast and also Chicago's broadcast. Good night. Mm -hmm.